Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. As usual, a number of things have come together at the same time, and one of those things is I need to get a fair number of these plants out of here. I need to prune them, uh, pot them, or repot them, depending upon uh, which plant it is, and get them ready for Monday. Uh, Monday they're going to be put into that large U-shaped paludarium, and I know I haven't shown you many in the way of videos of that, uh, but there's definitely one going to be coming up for next week because there's been an awful lot happening there and it is beginning to come along quite nicely. Now I could have done this on uh, Saturday and Sunday like over the weekend kind of thing but I do want them to get into their new pots and allow them to rest a little bit before I uh, move them into the new tank. Uh, that way I don't have, well I have, like, let's just say I have fewer issues with uh, the move and that sort of thing so that is my goal and as I started doing this I decided well I might as well just go ahead and do what I originally planned on doing, which is getting pretty much all the plants out of here, like all the ones that are in pots that you see in the main part of the pond, and get this ready for breeding white clouds, because I've been putting this off too long. I mean, obviously there's been a lot of other things I've been doing, but I really do need to get to this. I want to get them in there. And one of the things I noticed while I was selecting my white clouds is... There was actually, out of that group I bought, only about four that, you know, plumped up nicely or ready or showed nice colors. Four that are, I think, are uh, worthy of breeding. So actually it was a really good idea that I did this because I definitely need to uh, purchase some more of them because uh, first off, it's always a good idea to diversify the genetics as much as possible. And it has been more than long enough that anything that I buy now it's definitely not going to be related to anything that I already have. So that's good, one good thing. And yeah, like I said, I just looked at them and definitely about half of them were not. There's something wrong with each one of them. Like, I think there's only one with a curved spine. Uh, there's one male that seemed to be a little less uh, vigorous. Definitely wasn't fattening up as much as the others. Uh, it could have just been bullying from uh, the other fish that were in the tank, but Again, it's simply not up to enough standards for me to want to breed it. So that is, like I said, that is one thing that needed to be done. And one thing I'm definitely going to go looking for in the next couple of days to try and get some more of them. Which is kind of unfortunate because, believe it or not, in this uh, neck of the woods at the moment, white clouds are around $4 each, which is just ridiculously expensive considering uh, they used to be, you know, cheap almost feeder fish where you can buy them for uh, less than a dollar each for sure uh, so that's like I said that's just not right so uh, that's actually another good thing about me uh, breeding my own and also while I'm out there doing that I am definitely going to look for some more uh, zebra daniels I have a few that are really nice but believe it or not out of all the ones I picked up I didn't get any males so I do want to breed those as well and uh, that is again something else I want to do I'm not going to breed them in here of course uh, depending on how well the white clouds do, if they end up doing really, really well, I don't mind moving other things in here. But I was already planning on putting uh, guppies in here, so like, I don't want this to become uh, too multi-species. I do want to keep it to uh, a reasonable number, and I think two is pretty much what that number is going to be. And uh, that way, like I said, I want to get this uh, filled up with fish. So I definitely want the guppies in here for sure. And uh, the white clouds are also another really good one, so I think it's going to stick to those too. So there's going to be a fair amount of mulm uh, left over after I'm done all this. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that at all. I mean, there's a 50-gallon drum below here, which I, I think I cut it down to about 40, but it's still plenty of water. And there's an awful lot of material in there, of coral and that sort of stuff, to help uh, you know, buffer the water and do all the filtration and stuff. And of course, I have, I'm not going to remove all the plants. I decided to leave the hornwort in there. Uh, mostly because it just floats, so I don't think the white clouds are going to be tempted to try and lay eggs in it. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to leave it there. I mean, hornwort is a nice, fast-growing plant, so it will help... Uh, <laughs> soil as well, apparently. Uh, it will help keep the water nice and healthy, so there you go for that. Uh, then I'm going to do a little bit of netting out here because a few pieces of plants got broken off, uh, especially a fair amount of valicinaria because it got intertwined with a lot of the other plants, and... Uh, a few leaves broke off, but as you can see, the size of those things uh, is not a loss at all. I don't think they would even be missed, even remotely. And then what I need to do is 
uh, take some java moss and put it over the grating for the egg scat uh, my sorry my egg collector for egg scatterers you can just see the grating there in the middle of the picture and I'm gonna put some marbles on top of that and hopefully the white clouds will do their thing and I'll end up with some eggs and we'll start raising those up I have bred them before and any of you who have bred white clouds it's not difficult uh, they pretty much just do their own thing just like guppies it's not I guess it's not something you really need to plan out my major concern of course with this is uh, getting some good genetics so I will have to definitely look around and see what's available and uh, that's it other than that um, they are an easy fish to breed uh, pretty much on the same lines as uh, zebra daniels as well I mean they're also very simple fish to breed it's pretty much just put them in a tank with plants and then take them out a little while and you'll have a ton of babies uh, I did breed them a few I think a couple of years ago now I did a bunch and I the only thing that went wrong with that was again unfortunately with zebras in and head white clouds uh, they're genetics you have to be very careful of that because you end up with some uh, curly gills sometimes and some bent spines and that sort of stuff and I really didn't care for how they all the offspring turned out uh, some of them were fine of course because they almost always are a few good ones but the percentage was so low that I decided not to keep breeding them and I just put them out to my clients tanks and uh, they lived out their lives there so hopefully I'll be able to get some better ones this time uh, I have plenty of live food now you can see some of the jars right there uh, to the left and I have one of the tanks now uh, has an awful lot of uh, hay in it as well and that's coming along nicely and of course I still have the main tank on the right for uh, my infusoria and it's always green so I don't think I have any issues with uh, giving them lots of initial starting food uh, a few other things I'm going to be working on for live food as well but I'm going to save that for another video and this is pretty much all there is to this this is what I'm going to do for today I, like I said, I'm going to put a little bit of java moss in here and rake that down with some marbles. And I am going to put the four that I like in here now. And just on the off chance that they're going to start breeding uh, simply on their own that way. I suspect they will. Uh, it is, like, like I said, they're not hard to breed. Uh, but uh, you never know. I mean, I just want to be a little extra cautious with this. Like I said, I don't want to go to all this trouble and have uh, a bunch of bent spines and just non-vigorous fish. I remember when I first started getting the uh, guppy colony I have currently now up and running and trying to get good quality initial uh, fish to breed, it was uh, difficult. I mean, I ended up going through, I think about maybe about six or seven different uh, fish, uh, types of fish, sorry, from different places uh, went through all the pains of trying to quarantine them and then of course getting their babies and growing those out and then crossbreeding them and trying to get all that going and I don't hopefully I won't have to go to all that trouble uh, for the white clouds I mean I mean I'll just keep my fingers crossed we'll see how it goes uh, anyway so I'm gonna do that uh, in the next uh, couple of days I'm gonna try and get some more I will put them in a quarantine tank of course uh, I may not uh, all right, this is this is a bit risky normally I quarantine I quarantine for a long time usually uh, almost two months before I will mix them with anything else because this is the only aquarium that's going to have white clouds in it I gonna probably cut that back and set up a tank for their own watch them for a couple of weeks fatten them up and hopefully they will do their thing uh, looking healthy happy and then what I'll do is uh, put them into here after a couple of weeks I know that's not the right way of doing it um, but unfortunately I do really have to get this going because I want them to breed before uh, the cold weather sets in and I want to get some uh, fish that are at least a reasonable size relatively quickly uh, so that's unfortunately a shortcut that I have to take so let me know what you think uh, leave comments I really do like this angle of looking at this pond uh, this is the way I meant to, for it to be viewed not through uh, the plexiglass uh, I do like looking down on top of fish like this reminds me when I was a kid looking in creeks and watching fish so thank you very much for watching let me know what you think I'll see you in the next video and bye for now